All right, so I just, um, in the last lecture, just showing this uh, map, I'm just going to briefly mention this because um, Mormonism is a distinctly American religion in the sense that it started here. Um, <clears throat> and the whole concept of the Book of Mormon is that uh, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the people here that are um, supposed to be uh, uh, the lost tribes of Israel. Um, I'm not saying this, showing this to promote this or to uh, mock it. Um, I simply want to show uh, um, how native and indigenous uh, culture here does sometimes uh, blend in with um, non-indigenous culture and here we have uh, a Mormon perspective uh, um, and um, this doesn't correlate with secular histories archaeological or, or, or linguistic studies but it is a belief system and we've talked a lot about different religions and concepts and so I just thought I would kind of briefly mention it because if you didn't know this uh, I think you at least find it interesting and, and of course Mormons are always uh, willing to explain or talk about their why they believe in these things. Again, I'm not promoting, I'm not mocking, just pointing out, okay? So, all right, moving on. Mesoamerica, um, <clears throat> 2500 BCE to 700 CE. Um, we have the pre-classic uh, uh, from the 19th century BCE to 150, uh, uh, um, I think I meant to put uh, oh, 150 CE, sorry. Uh, and then we have the post-classic. That doesn't really tell us a lot of information. <laughs> Mainly, uh, um, I just want to talk about, you know, I'm going to go over some of these cultures and show them on the map here, okay? So let me just go into Olmec uh, of the pre-classic period. Um, First of all, what's interesting before I even go into discussing things, you notice that the features on these statues, uh, more than nine feet tall and up to 25 tons. And many have pointed out that they have features that may make them, uh, this looks like this person could be from Africa. People have noticed that. Uh, you'll get theories about this. Um, I don't have any uh, ways to substantiate or conflict with any theory on this, just pointing this out. Um, Olmec culture lay south of the Gulf of Mexico and west of the Yucatan Peninsula, located on what is now San Lorenzo, was the most important cluster of cities. Um, and so what do we know? We have basically a calendar um, that suggests a long count calendar uh, uh, originated with Olmec civilization and not the Maya, although we do know more about this through the Maya. And um, this was for astronomy, astrology, agriculture, genealogy, and prophecy. Uh, the world in cycles of creation, destruction, and recreation. Um, there was a current cycle that began in 3114 BCE and it was supposed to end December 21, 2012. Uh, we were told that the world was going to end, right? Another calendar prophecy failure because, by the way, every prophecy that's prophesied at the end of the world is going to happen and there's been quite a big number never come to fruition because we're all here, right? And um, you know, just thought to point that out. Um, no Olmec writing has ever been discovered. And that's one of our tricks that I talked about, right? Their civilization ends about 300 BCE. Um, and we're again left with uh, not much information. That's what's frustrating. Um, so uh, Maya. Uh, of the classic period. Maya built on Olmec culture. The village-based agriculture between 7000 and 1500 BCE, the world was warmer and you had items such as corn, beans, squash, chili peppers, wild birds, then there were armadillo, um, giant uh, bison, camels, and mammoths were wiped out. Agriculture became more important than hunting. They had trade with other cultures in the region, a numerical system using zero as a number. That's significant because, um, I don't know if you know this, but zero 
is an innovation that we see later um, coming into the West from the East. And here we have the same kind of innovation. <clears throat> there, you know, we take for granted that when you do counting and use numbers that there's a zero to mark uh, 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 counting, but, but in fact, that's not always been the case. Um, and, and so, you know, you have, uh, uh, again, a rich culture, but we have limitations uh, um, on there. Why? Well, um, it has a lot to do with the Spaniards, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so what do we know? Uh, we know that this was a hierarchical society, certainly not different than most societies in the world. At this point, they are the only known Mesoamerican civilization to develop writing, but all but four of thousands of books were destroyed by the Spaniards in the 1520s. Not a great legacy for uh, the Spaniards in terms of what they contributed to civilization when you consider that not only did a lot of people get killed here, um, a lot of knowledge was lost to us forever. Um, anyhow, autonomous city-states with sacred kings, not strong central government. Um, in their religion, there were 13 layers of heaven and earth was flat. This is kind of the cosmic picture. Only kings, brave warriors, and political elites went to heaven. The majority of went to the underworld. You know, I just have to say, you know, what I find really interesting about this. I'm doing a lot of study of Nordic uh, um, myths right now, but it, it's something I'm trying to polish. You notice I didn't really have very, any section in my lectures going over, uh, uh, focusing on, say, Viking or Scandinavian religion. And the reason is, is that I need to, you know, that's also something I need to polish, and I haven't Put the time in yet to integrate into these uh, lectures which is so hard because we're covering so much anyways but um yggdrasil this big cosmic tree and these different places and locations that are there it's very similar the idea of valhalla or valhol uh um as it's more properly uh, termed where the slain warriors go uh, um and I don't know. In a hierarchical society, I mean, the Vikings had a caste system, for example, and they put it into the myths that certain slaves uh, come out of one mixture of, of uh, humans and gods, and then the higher classes um, come out from another. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that there's a direct correlation. What I'm saying is what's interesting to me is that cultures that are so far apart in time and space still have ideas that I, I can immediately say, oh, that's that's not too far removed from uh, um, some ideas that I'm seeing somewhere else. And so humanity seems to really have a lot of uh, similarities. Now, in this case, we, we, we lost information about this culture for the most part due to the Spanish conquests. Well, Christianity crushed the pagan world and did a lot of the same thing in, in, in pagan Europe. But on the other side to it, one of the main sources about, let's say, uh, Viking mythology and Scandinavian uh, 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 mythology comes from a 13th century Christian Icelandic chieftain. And it was the writing that came in through Christianity that was then later used to preserve m more, give us more knowledge about a vague uh, Viking past. Um, and again, I'm just pointing this out, is that the same thing could have happened to the Vikings as happened to the Mayan society in Scandinavia, or vice versa. So, um, I don't know. I hope you're following what I'm trying to say about this, but uh, again, there seems to be a lot of similarities with other cultures. Now, the bloodletting thing uh, 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 that we see in the archaeological finds um shocks a lot of people uh, um of course blood being sacred and used in a ritual when you think about the fact that the bible um you know the the levitical priesthood slaughtered animals after animal like i mean massive slaughters of animals god demanding blood god rejects the fruit and vegetables given by cain and he accepts the, the sacrifice of uh the lamb um 
God uh, tested Abraham's sacrifice, Isaac, and he doesn't do it. God's pleased that he w would be willing to do it, but in return, he still has an animal slaughtered. And then Jesus then is supposed to represent a sacrifice of God sacrificing himself uh, um, once and for all. But the idea of bloodletting and blood and the sacred and the need for it is also something that we see in other traditions. One, the very heart of Western civilization, which is the Judeo-Christian tradition. Um, and so I just thought I would point that out. I'm going to end here and move on to the next lecture.